Today, we will go over proximal fifth metatarsal fractures. To start, let's review some relevant anatomy. The fifth metatarsal articulates with the fourth metatarsal and cuboid proximally, as you can see here. The base of the fifth metatarsal has attachments of the peroneus brevis and part of the plantar fascia. You can appreciate that the peroneus tertius attaches along the superior portion proximally as well. Blood supply to the fifth metatarsal comes from the metaphyseal and nutrient arteries. However, this forms a watershed zone right about where this articulation occurs between the fourth and fifth metatarsals. Based on this, the base of the fifth metatarsal is split into three zones. Zone one includes the tuberosity. Zone two includes the metaphyseal diaphyseal junction, which contains the watershed zone and is where the fifth metatarsal articulates with the fourth. And zone three, the diaphyseal area, which extends approximately 1.5 centimeters distally from the tuberosity into the tubular part of the diaphysis. Fractures through zone one are colloquially called pseudo-Jones fractures, which can involve an avulsion of the tubercle. Fractures through zone two are commonly referred to as a Jones fracture, which extend into the fourth and fifth metatarsal articulation. And with this being a relatively avascular zone in comparison to the other zones, fractures Fractures here have higher non-union rates, with some studies reporting up to 15 to 30 percent. Fractures through zone 3 are called proximal diaphyseal or stress fractures. Located distal to the 4th and 5th metatarsal articulation, these are commonly seen in patients who overload the lateral column of their foot, as in patients who have a caval varus foot deformity or sensory neuropathy. Alrighty, I hope this quick overview of proximal fifth metatarsal fractures will help you on rotation. Here are some of the highlights you will want to know as a medical student on rotation. I will see you all in the next one.